Hey you guys, welcome to today's reading. Oh my pocket was, sorry, that's embarrassing. Welcome to today's reading. I hope it finds you well. Um, I want to do today's reading for myself <laughs> to bring um, clarity and I hope that it can help you as well. I really do have, I do believe that if it helps me, it can help someone else. And I don't know if that's selfish or not, and I don't care, or I care so much. I don't know. But Archangels, Angels, Ancestors, and Spirit Guides, please guide this reading. Please let me be a clear channel for your divine love, wisdom, and guidance. So let's just get an Oracle card to start this reading off. I'm going to choose this one. Yeah, we have a number 40, Mindful and group think and this card that plagues me in this energy um, at the bottom 55 the farther gate bold step forward and i saw 119 on the clock there which feels like one is that initiation point and i want to say ignition point as well um for and of course now i'm hearing that song <laughs> And there's the four of wands and the five of wands. Yeah, one, four, one there too. Uh, that R. Kelly song, I refuse to sing it. I refuse to sing it. Um, cancel, clear, delete. But yeah, mindful and group think. And I'm hearing everyone has a piece of the truth. Everyone has a piece of the puzzle. Okay, holy cannoli. The three cards that we're beginning with are all major arcana. <laughs> we have the witch, the revolution, and the empress. So the magician, the tower, and the empress 222, which feels like um, some sort of false paradigm falling around. I want to say falling around the feminine's feet. And I saw this image of like a satin, white satin dress, like falling off of, and just like built like um, bunching up around someone's feet, like a woman's feet. It's like the, the dress comes off and there's like, there's something about the way the fabric kind of like folds onto itself and like gathers in a pile at the feminine's feet. And maybe there's something, you know, with this number 40 mindful and group think there's this energy of being overly caught up in the mind. And it is uh, Wednesday, which is Mercury Day. We The first card we have is ruled by Mercury with the, the witch here, the magician. This is um, Gemini and Virgo energy, which is reminding me that I did my three, three on the clock. I did my birth chart in Vedic astrology and look into that if you haven't already, like how your birth chart is different depending on who's looking at it, I guess. And um, yeah, it's interesting. My alter ego, I wanna think of it. And I'm um, Libra rising, Gemini sun and Cancer moon, still Cancer Mercury, and then um, Aries Venus and Leo Mars, which is just like, <laughs> I think that's like, yeah, I like that version of myself. I like both versions, but it's interesting to see yourself through a different light. And somehow both make sense, especially depending on um, who's looking. Um, yeah, so the magician, revolution, and the empress. And I heard worlds crumbling and I'm seeing the lightning here. Um, and this uh, tower card and we had a thunderstorm last night with a lot of electricity a lot of lightning I was on the phone and it was just like flashing at these um, important moments and I'm hearing staccato vibration which staccato is like quick rhythm or something right I'm 
vaguely remembering something from music class. And I heard inc increasing the rhythm, increasing the vibratory rate. So this could be um, everyone's divine feminine energy within the internal frequency centered around like how we feel, how we nurture ourselves and others, these healing, um, the parts of us that are responsible for uh, those more sensitive aspects of ourself. I feel like I can't spit out what I'm trying to, what I'm feeling. Yeah, and that's feminine energy. <laughs> And that's where this, um, like the number 40 with this mindful and group think feels like toxic masculine energy within, yeah, within the collective. And now we have the devil coming out, Capricorn energy. And this is reclamation, which is the card right before the tower. And we also have strength coming out, number eight. So um, these are all major arcana. <laughs> Crazy. Let's get one more card. Uh -huh. Now we have the Queen of Swords coming out underneath the Empress and the Ten of Pentacles at the bottom. Whew, there's a lot of power here. This feels like being really strict in your boundaries or judicious in, like, I'm hearing judicious and in, in the roles that you allow people to play in your life which i guess is a way of like i'm getting this energy of someone like pruning a bush and the bush is a metaphor f for um like how you experience the world your perspective and it's like you don't want to allow certain energies in and so it's like snip snip <laughs> snip like there's this very it's a, it, it is a little harsh but i feel like it could be necessary especially like with um the devil card right next to her the queen of swords and with the tower right next to the empress it's interesting because both those cards they're looking at the two feminine energies and the feminine energies are not looking back. Ooh, not looking back. Yeah, so there could be things that are coming up again, especially with Mercury in retrograde. Um, for revision, it's like a test kind of energy. Like, can you still resist this? Do you? Are you sure you still want to say no? 808 on the clock. So yeah, there could be karma here. And um, wow. And I'm seeing, I was just, looking at the strength card, which is another number eight. And then we have number 17, which reduces to eight stork and the queen of cups. So yeah, there could be people, um, places, memories, experiences that are really pulling at your heart space and pulling at, it's like lessons that you've learned previously. I want to say even, yeah, look at that. Another eight, eight of wands, 21, the mountain. It's like you're being tested to, um, climb up a certain mountain, some sort of challenge that's before you. Wow, look at that. We have man with the ace of cups, 28, and then um, number 27, letter with the seven of swords, 858 eight on the clock. Wow. Yeah, things are coming in so fast at such a high frequency um, that it's making you feel vulnerable, maybe, it's and it, because it's a test. It's not practice. Like, it's not... Um, the, the training wheels have come off and maybe this has to do with a, a relationship or some sort of ace of cups or this energy of, um, there's an opportunity, but, um, there's this undercurrent of, I want to hear, I, I, I want to hear, I want to say, and I'm hearing emotional neglect and abandonment and um, how this can lead to uh, a desperation or a desire to move quickly, to express a lot. And that's the energy of electricity as well, of lightning. That's that Uranus energy, Aquarius energy. It's like it came out of nowhere. 
Um, and it didn't come out of nowhere. It's just that it was building in the dark. It was, um, there was friction, you know, how you create static is there's friction. Um, so there could be even if this is a specific relationship or this is referring to a pattern or a theme or many different relationships, there could be oppositions, um, like in your birth chart, there's, um, this energy of coming, looking at, looking at the same thing from two different perspectives. This could be within you or between you and another person. And I want to say specifically like your partner, maybe, yeah, I I'm hearing your partner in life. Like you're being challenged to, um, to, to come into partnership, no matter how short in duration. And it's not about the other person. It's about, I'm hearing like unlocking hidden cupboards within your mind, hidden places, um, nuance. I'm going to put these cards out because I can't seem to put them away. Um, so I mean, that feels significant too. It's like this Mercury retrograde brings up energies and people from the past, lessons that you've uh, been challenged to learn already. And... Um, yeah, it's like you couldn't put it down, so here it is again. So it's not for no reason. And I feel like there could be um, energies here around moderation. And I'm hearing fairness and diplomatic thinking, which feels like very Libran energy. And um, which feels like the remedy to this Capricorn energy. Wow, and then number 11 coming out with Whip and the Knight of Wands. 11 is the number of the justice card. That's why I said, wow. And interesting that that's over top of reclamation, the devil card, because um, there's something here about how we treat ourselves as being mirrored externally. Here's the 10 of pentacles again at the bottom of the book. Whoa, bottom of the deck, the number 26 in book and another number eight with 26. And also 26, 27, 28. So 8, 9, 10. Yeah, there's like, there's a, an ending energy. And then 1, 2, 3, 4 on the clock. <laughs> Thank you, Spirit. Um, yeah, it's like 8 is that energy of karma. It's the energy also of abundance, though. And again, I'm hearing restraint. Um, so there's something about the way in which you deal with your own darkness, your own primal animalistic nature. We have uh, number 33, wow, with another number eight, uh, the eight of pentacles with key. 33 is the number of Christ consciousness. It's Piscean energy. The eight of pentacles is Virgo, sun. And this key, we have um, a key here on this mindful group think card as well. And a little key hole there. So this could be significant for you, maybe in regards to, um, I want to say like purchasing a home or I'm also seeing 1050, which feels like there's some sort of choice point. There's maybe been an ending and um, now there's some sort of opportunity for change. Um, and the seven of swords energy here with letter is the energy of Aquarius moon. And that can be, Again, I'm hearing emotional neglect. I'm also hearing envy. There's someone that could be envying how you move in the world or your capacity to still feel and expand and like experience a, a wide range of emotions with the Queen of Cups here and the witch. It's like the witch is that magician energy where you have everything you need to create a life worth living to and specifically something about creation here. So there could also be something around like motherhood. Um, and we did have, we do have the Empress out here, which is the, I want to say the divine mother, but divine feminine. Now we have number 35 anchor. So another eight with 35 and the nine of swords. This is Gemini Mars energy. This is a lot of mental energy and I'm hearing anguish. This is coming up with uh, the whip and reclamation. 
and I can feel that weight, the weight of the anchor. And I, and, and I'm hearing, or I'm seeing like weight, like W A I T. I'm hearing it like both ways, W E I G H T and W A I T. Um, and there's something here about patience and that how that ties in with strength. There's something here about how um, you're the one that has to unlock your potential. You are the one that has to um, allow the pain in or allow the full vibrancy of your like felt experience in there's some way in which you might be emotionally neglecting or abandoning yourself and maybe valuing strength over softness has been a, a strong theme in your life i'm hearing in your current relationships and your current partnerships mm. and this mug has um like cactuses all over it which is that energy it's very cancerian energy actually um where it's like there's a hard shell there's spikes on the outside but the inside there's a lot of water being held and this is giving me the energy of like a sponge and again i'm hearing emotional neglect like there's a need to um deal with everything you've absorbed and this is feeling also like past lifetimes as well as current now we have um, number 12 with birds and the seven of pentacles and number 29 with woman and the ace of swords. So we have the man and the woman here. Ace of swords coming up over top of the queen of swords. And um, if you've watched my readings or you're familiar with this deck, there are two seven of pentacle cards. This is the like lower vibration version. So there's definitely a need to like um, cut cords, cleanse, release these lower vibrational attachments. Even that sounds toxic though. <laughs> like, uh, because it's like, I don't know. It, I don't know if it's about I guess what I want to say even in this card like her eyes don't look like they're fully pointing in the same direction. Um, and so it's like All we can do is make choices and depending on the choices we make, it's going to, it's going to change our life. And um, when we're coming up against these uncomfortable vibrations with the nine of swords and um, anchor, whip, mountain, anchor, whip, mountain. <laughs> and the seven of swords and the devil and the tower when we're dealing with these really powerful frequencies it can be incredibly destabilizing and like physically emotionally mentally uncomfortable is that mother yeah there's so there's like a need to nurture yourself by recognizing the only power you have beginning where we started, 19, 191. Um, the only power you have is where you focus your attention or your eyes, where you, what you allow yourself to dwell on, what you allow yourself to engage with, the energies, the people, the places, the foods you eat. And with um, what I was saying with it coming back where we started, we started this reading with one, 19 that decision point that ignition point that initiation point and 19 which i think i never spit out 19 is the number of the sun which is the truth which is consciousness and i'm hearing pure living awakeness 
pure living clarity. And I'm getting this image of like water, um, like just going down your throat. <laughs> it's trying to not make it so sensual. Um, but just like, yeah, that energy of rehydration, um, of receiving, receiving something that's so pure and simple that it's easy to miss. Ooh, that's going to make me cry. And I'm getting that song now, What You Got by, um, I think his name is like Quail. I feel like there's a P in there somewhere. I'd be curious, like spiritual significance of quail, spiritual meaning. Um, but it's, how does it go? It's what you got. <clears throat> it's like, could make me fall in love and I don't know what it is, but it reminds me of drugs. And da, 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 da. But it's like, yeah, yeah, gratitude in reverse, number 20. When we're in this number 40 mindful group think energy, and we're just like in this state of being inundated, there's like a barrage of energy. It seems like there's, it's complicated. It's because we've lost touch with reality. We've lost touch with the more subtle vibrations. And there's this like strong, I'm hearing DNA code um, with addiction, especially with reclamation here with the devil and strength. There's like a need to abstain. Yeah. Or like be mindful of how you, yeah. Number 12 in reverse, comfort, 2212. Oh, that's crazy, 2212 and then 12. Um, yeah, it's like this Piscean energy where I'm hearing a double-edged sword, where the one fish in the, the Pisces symbol swims up and the one swims down. It's a dual energy, it's a mutable energy. So, and it's Jesus energy, right? It, it, and we're just um, coming out of Pisces season and into, air, and we're in Aries season. Um, but there's, yeah, that flexibility is, tempting um, but can quickly turn dark and this is kind of the theme of this reading how we're talking about perspective shift and um, meeting in the middle and I'm noticing how we have 12 already out here and 21 21 with the mountain and the eight of wands and 12 with the birds and the seven of pentacles. So there could definitely be these feminine energies from your past that are wanting to communicate to you, but also potentially like wanting to harm you or like wanting you to come off of your throne, wanting you maybe to sacrifice your comfort with number 51 with self-exploration. So there are definitely opportunities here for you to gain awareness and knowledge about yourself. And I think that is what this woman ace of swords energy number 29 is about it's like you're we're on this eight nine ten energy and this one two three four energy um but really where it all lands with number 29 reducing to 11 it's like which again is that justice energy it's the energy of union within it's like yeah and then with number 11 and the whip and the knight of wands it's like you have the choice whether what union looks like to you, whether you're coming into union with like your, your masculine energy, your Mars energy, your ability to move out in the world, to conquer, to, to demand, or um, your ability to love. And on that note, I just want to play this sound bowl. and 
31, which just feels again like you have the choice to begin again in each moment. That's where your power lies. I'm hearing especially in the dark. <sighs> yeah, doing breath work could be helpful at this time or um, something where you can declutter. Yeah, there could be someone that you met that has this like intoxicating or like drug-like pull over you. Um, and it could, there could be this like cough syrup kind of energy where it's numbing, it's soothing. Um, it feels like it's healing, but it's just, it could be disempowering with empowerment in reverse. And it could seem like, you know, I just, I just need a little bit more. I just need a little bit more. I just need to get closer. Um, but really, like, it's the same story you've been living, like, or you've lived many, many times. And that's kind of the energy of a karmic connection. And the confusion could simply be um, not your own. With this mindful and group think, there could be a lot of energies that um, are coming towards you, but not actually you. Interesting that the only upright card here from these uh, Till Swan frequency cards is self-exploration, <laughs> which just feels like the reminder that we're always dealing with parts of ourselves we're always dealing with the world through our own lens. Like what we see is who we are. Yeah, wow. Number, actually don't, but yes I do. 14, yes. Which is temperance, Sagittarius energy. It's the vulture and asphodel. And it says upheaval. And with it being number 14 linked in with the temperance energy, it feels like healing upheaval. And that feels like the energy too of like, you know, being sick. Um, like regurgitating. Yeah, there's something. Yeah, and there's that re word. There's that. There's something that needs to be digested again in order to uh, be fully assimilated, I'm hearing. And we have number another 12 at the bottom of the deck. The lizard and pitcher plant stagnation there could be a resistance to this energy of the hanged man with all these 12s a resistance to that piscean energy of surrender of maybe being stuck um there could be a fear there could be like anxiety especially with this number 40 um mindful group think energy there's and, and the witch the magician um the Nine of Swords, the mountain even. It's like running and chasing your problems. <laughs> and I'm hearing like, so that they won't catch up to you. And it, it doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, and that's the energy of karma. Like it's just a cyclical um, hamster wheel. So it feels like the remedy here is to move slow, to get your eyes both pointing in the same direction. Um, 292 there. Yeah, to make choices, strategic choices around endings, around um, the purpose of, of the life you're living. There's something about having time for thoughtful consideration and I also feel like um I don't, I don't think I told you this I got number 69 here ameliorate in reverse and to ameliorate I believe is to make something better um and so there could be this desire to like want to put a band-aid on something also that 69 is the energy of self-love it's cancer energy as well. So more of that mothering energy. Um, 
but there could be like a desire to try to fix all the time. I'm hearing wounded masculine and I'm also hearing wounded hero. And that, but that desire to want to fix or band-aid is um, prolonging. I'm hearing prolonging inaction. So there's, I feel like there's a need to be tender enough to recognize what is broken or what is not working and to just um, hold space for that, that brokenness and that ending. And there could be grief here as well. Grief that, um, again, wants to keep you running. And I'm also hearing like self-hatred, self-exposure. Yeah, there's, yeah. It's like whatever experiences that you're moving through, because of course we're all moving through different experiences, but it's also all the same. Um, yeah, I'm hearing you're being challenged to question your self-doubt. Like, where does it come from? What is the nature of it? What is the texture of it? It's like the more we try to um, get lost in, uh, in, in reality, to be like consumed, these Piscean, Neptunian energies, the more it becomes about hard work. <laughs> Like, and I'm hearing the expression, like, your your work is being cut out for you. And it's like, you're doing, you, you are cutting out your work for you with your choices, with your action and inaction. You are designing your life. You are creating it. And it's just a choice whether you become conscious of that, whether you take the reins, whether you pick up and accept the responsibility and you engage consciously with these decisions, with your felt experience, with the energy you choose to share with other people, or if you just choose to, I'm hearing be the master of none. Hmm. Yeah. I just want to put the man and the woman next to each other and kind of see and once again the man is looking at the viewer at me and the woman is just not connected like she's looking somewhere over here <laughs> like she's out of it and that's the ace of swords which is oh there's 33 on the clock and they're definitely like globally is this energy of the toxic masculinity crumbling and I, I did have the man over top of revolution so there could be a need to um, recognize and reconcile with the wounded feminine within all of us it's been wounded through lying through betrayal wow and then there's the child coming at number 13 um lying in betrayal like in our personal relationships to ourselves from the government like ugh. i don't i think it's impossible to live and to not be traumatized there's another eight yeah it's but it's just like figuring out why the situation that is before you is perfect for you why you might have needed um, the lesson to come in this exact way. Yeah, and I wanna just say like, stay strong. <laughs> Even if that means being weak even if that means letting yourself feel eight of pentacles and six of swords. Oof, that's a hard energy. That's like the energy of getting, getting to work, walking away, 
making the adult decisions. It's like the energy of restraint, but also valuing your peace. And I'm hearing valuing their peace as well. Like their piece of the puzzle, their piece of the truth. There's the hierophant on the bottom. So yeah, that's interesting. If you're looking for a relationship, if you're longing for a stable connection where you can trust someone, are you that for yourself? 35, 36. Yeah, and number nine, the weasel and pine introspection. And pine is about anger. So there's some part of you that is angry with another part of you, potentially. And that might be the work. And we have number 37, lay of the land, ancestral wisdom. So yeah, it could definitely link back to some sort of karma that... Um, has been moving through your family for generations, maybe around self-love and self-trust, because I just saw both of those cards. And um, you're lining up with people, places, and things. Oh, here comes my mom. <laughs> um, interesting that we're talking about feminine energy and mother. Um, yeah, you're lining up with people, places, and things that are making it impossible for you to hide. Because if you hide, you will be overcome. I feel like that could have been the whole reading, that last part right there. So speak from the heart. And that that is your protection. Stick to the truth. Stick to what you know. And all will be well. 37 on the clock which is 10 completions. So this is where I'm gonna leave this reading. I'm gonna play the sound bowl once more because after all, this reading is for me. <laughs> but I do sincerely hope you enjoyed and that it helped in some tangible, real way. And I'll see you soon.